Look with me, if you will, at verse 20. The Bible said in verse 20, And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee. Because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Look down at verse 25 in the same chapter. Verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself. Isn't that an unusual verse of Scripture? To work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. This man's wife pressured him, and the Bible said he sold himself. I got to look at that verse of Scripture one day and I said, if that man sold himself, who'd he sell himself to? How can you? Who'd he, say, who'd he sell himself to? Don't say, does it? But it said, he sold himself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. I got to thinking about all the years that I've preached about music and what I'm going to talk about tonight. And it's, I think... It took a long time, but I think I got it about figured out of how this thing works. I know as a preacher how God and why God uses preachers. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not use a preacher because of his own personal ability. God don't use a preacher because of his race or his nationality. God don't use a preacher because of who he is or what his name is or how much money he's got. God don't use a preacher that um, because uh, of his education. Lord knows that's a truth, ain't it? God don't use a preacher because of his status in the community. God uses a preacher because he calls him, and somewhere in that man's life he yields himself to God. Ain't that right? I'll never forget... When I was about 19 years old, I was up in the woods praying one day. And in the woods praying, way up in the woods above where I lived at that time. And the, the strange thing is, I live now just about in that very spot where my house is now. It used to be all woods. I went up in the woods one morning. And that night, I was going to get to preach. I was just a young preacher, just starting out, still a teenager. That night, I was going to get to preach in a youth revival. I was so scared. I was so worried. I had tried preaching a time or two, and it just seemed like it didn't work. It just seemed like it just wasn't there. Well, I uh, went up in the woods that day, and I got down on my face. And I said, God, this time, I'm not getting up till you give me something. I stayed from 9 to 10, from 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, something like that, 1 to 2, nothing. I prayed. I said, Dear God, if I'm called to preach and you're going to use me, there's got to be more to it than what I did that last time I tried. You're going to have to help me. They hollered at me. They said, Danny, you are going to get some chicken. You want to get somebody went to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Got some chicken. Listen, man, when a preacher says no to Kentucky Fried Chicken, he's getting down to business with God. Ain't that right? That's how you know you're called to preach. You wake up one morning and don't want to go to work craving chicken. That's how you know. You heard that story about where the preacher's false teeth fell in the well and they didn't know how to get it out and they couldn't get it out and couldn't get it out. So they took a chicken and lowered it down in the well and went clamped on it like that and just pulled them right out. They said, preach. They said, Brother Danny, we're going to go get some chicken. I said, I don't want no chicken. I want God. They said, Brother Danny, come on down here and eat. I said, I don't want no chicken. I want God. Yeah. By the way, young preachers, you know when you'll get God? When you want God more than you want anything else. If anything else means more to you than the Lord, then you're not going to get the Lord's blessing. I got down and I prayed. And I prayed. And I prayed. And I'm going to tell you something about 4 o'clock that evening. Something snapped. Call it whatever you want to. 
Call it get in touch. Call it getting. Don't call it second blessing. You call it whatever you think. You although that ain't right. You can call it what you want to. But I'll tell you one thing. God fell on me. And from that day till this, it's been different. And that night when I got up to preach, I, when I'd say something, it felt like boom. And I'd say something, and God moved. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if God does that with preachers, you hear, you hear some little fellow get called to preach? He's not. He's not. He's not got anything. He don't have no education. He don't have nothing. All of a sudden, his name's out there. He's preaching everywhere in the country. There's a reason for that. God touched his life. If God does that for preachers, you mark it down. The devil does that to rock and roll singers. You take somebody like Marilyn Manson. How in the world somebody like that? Do you think it's because of his talent? Is it his looks? Lord, he looks like he's going trick-or-treating on, on a normal day. What is it? I'll tell you what it is. There comes a point in a country music, rock music, uh, pop music, jazz music, there comes a point where they make some kind of little deal and sell themselves to work evil. And they get popular. You, got, you, you say you've got any scripture for that? When the devil came to Jesus, the devil said, I'll give you all of this stuff if you'll fall down and worship me. Ladies and gentlemen tonight, I am convinced we're living in a generation where the singers have sold their soul to Satan. They may not have said his name, but the devil offered them some kind of popularity, some kind of fame and fortune, and they said, okay, if I can have that, I'll give myself completely to you. There may be somebody like that here tonight. I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will rattle you and shake you to your foundation and save you before you leave this place tonight. Don't nobody else get up. You listening? This all started with a black man by the name of Robert Johnson. Most people think rock and roll started with Elvis. No, it didn't. Most people think rock and roll started with Alan Freed. He just come up with a phrase. The disc jockey in Cleveland, Ohio. Rock and roll's bedrock foundation come from a jazz guitar player by the name of Robert Johnson. And they said he went down one day in a little old place called Clarksdale, Mississippi at the highways of 61 and 49. And Eric Clapton and them guys sing about that. I went down to the crossroads. Amen. And I knelt down. And they said at the crossroads of Highway 49 and 61, Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. Before that, he couldn't even hardly play a guitar. And by the time he come back to town, he could play better than anybody there. Now, if you don't think God can get a hold of a preacher, you're wrong. And if you don't think God can get a hold of a rock and roll singer, you're wrong. I'm going to show you testimonies tonight of people who said, I, when, they said, when we start singing, something else takes over and plays our instruments. I'm going to show you where in Black Sabbath, when their group was hot back in the back in the day, they said that sometimes songs would just come out of nowhere and all the group would start playing the same song at the same time and they didn't even know it. Never heard the song. We're dealing with a spiritual power that is greater than anybody in here. It's not just music. It's not just radios and it's not just stereos and it's not just speakers in the back of your car. There's a satanic force behind it that's after your soul. You listening? Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. They said after that he would get drunk and curse God. And they said he was a young man. Rock singers always die young in the, most of the cases. That he said he got down on the floor and barked like a dog before he died. And all the people then said he sold his soul to the devil. And he died and went to hell. Now I want to say this tonight to introduce the message. 
Don't you sit there tonight and say, because I don't listen to some satanic Bible, or somebody ripping up the Bible or something, that the music that I listen to is okay. I'm going to say something to you tonight. Then you listen to me real careful. All rock music, every bit of it. All rock music. There is no such thing as good rock music. Amen. You say, well, I don't think that's right. You know why you say that? Because you like it and your flesh likes it and you don't want to quit doing it. Even for Jesus that died on the cross for your sin. And I'm going to say pop and uh, this little hip hop and rap and country. You say, what's wrong with country? Well, if you're so dumb, you have to ask what's wrong with it. You just bow your head and pray. God will give you a brain while I'm preaching. Because you'll never get the rest of this sermon. You go good and well a song that talks about drinking liquor and cussing and going with somebody you ain't married to is not right. You know that. Don't you? Don't you know that? Sure you do. Amen. You sure do. You mean to tell me, you say, Brother Danny, you mean to tell me that my little pop singers and Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears, you trying to tell me they're the same as Marilyn Manson? No. Just like I'm not trying to tell you marijuana is the same as crack, but it's still bad. Amen. Y'all going to get uncomfortable here in a minute. Might as well just get this off my chest this evening. They all belong to the same club. They all drink out of the same cup. They all eat off the same table. They are all led by the same spirit. You're still getting the poison. If a man drinks solid white liquor, then another man's got half water and half liquor, then another man's got a little bit of water and a little bit of liquor, and then a whole bunch of water and a little, they're still getting the liquor. And that's why the devil has so many different forms of music. Rock. The Bible said, bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Robert Johnson died at the age of 27. Alan Freed, the man who coined the phrase rock and roll, died at the age of 42, drunk. Elvis Presley, the most popular singer probably of all time individually, died at the age of 42 in a lifestyle of excess and destruction. He was born exactly 42 uh, my, the same day of the week as Robert Johnson died and a few years later on the same month, same day Janis Joplin had VD and heroin problems and died at something like 27. Jim Morrison did the same thing Brian Jones of the Rolling Stone his girlfriend put a, st a spell on him, some kind of voodoo spell, and put a needle to his stomach. He died. Jimi Hendrix, 27. Keith Moon, Sid Vicious, John Bottom, Tupac was murdered full of bullet holes. The notorious B.I.G., Easy e like Freddie Mercury, died with AIDS and red rum. You know what red rum spelled backwards is? Murder. Kurt Cobain, 27 years old. John Lennon, 42 years old. Gary Thane, Bon Scott, Ron McKernan, Al Wilson, Benny Taylor, over a hundred rock singers have met an untimely death when Satan come to collect what was his. The average age of an American dying tonight is 75. The average age of rock singers' life is 36. What's happening? Why are our high schools being shot up like killing zones? Why is it no longer safe to go to a public high school anymore? The blame is largely because tonight of the music they listen to. And so I want you to listen carefully and watch. As I show you a few minutes of video, I'll be commenting on they sold their souls. For rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, every boy and girl, don't you turn your head. You listen to what God has to say to you. Listen to, as the Lord would speak to your heart. Watch it carefully. <laughs> 